Tuesday, June 5th, has dawned bright on the island of Nevis. Today, as an island and as a federation, we will bid goodbye and farewell to the first Premier of Nevis, Dr. Simeon Daniel, who lived from August 22nd, 1934 to May 27, 2012. And here we've got an artistic impression of the late Nevision leader by renowned Nevision artist Vaughan Anslin. Today here at the courthouse in downtown Charlestown where Dr. Daniel served as a lawyer barrister for nearly half a century. Common Nevision folks are filing past his casket. Of course, first on hand this morning was a family led by his dear widow, Mrs. Sheila Daniel, and then we had Premier Joseph Parry leading the delegation from the Nevis Island Assembly. And here we now have the Deputy Governor General of Nevis, who's not been well recently, the Mr. Eustace John and his wife, they're going in to, 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 to view the, the, the coffin. And of course, it's a big day here in Nevis. From here, we move at 11.45. The body will be taken to his home church, the St. Thomas's Anglican Church, where there will be a service commencing at 2.30. And then there'll be burial at the church grounds. Testament book of Isaiah, at chapter 28, verses 14 and 16, the prophet exclaimed, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord that rules this people which is in Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lame Zion for foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. We are all gathered here at this hour, in this place, this historic church on a hill, to lift high a life well lived. A life complex in its simplicity, humble in the face of its enormous impact, a life defined by sacrifice, courage, public service. Today, we acknowledge a life we can now say came to be a sure foundation, a precious cornerstone whose efforts have gifted us the land we know. In the small and cozy village of Barnsgut, on the 22nd day of August in the year of Grace 1934, Job and Melvina Daniel, with pride and joy, gave thanks for the arrival of a son. It was a Wednesday. Some of the elders in the village have noised an account of the naming of the boy. It is said that Job was a good and faithful Anglican. Job was also to become a prominent facilitator of tea parties throughout the island. Nevis people will understand that Job loved the canticles. The word was that he was fascinated in particular by the canticle known as Mount Demetrius, or the Song of Simeon, derived from the book of Luke in which the apostle tells the story of the occasion when Mary and Joseph took the baby boy to be baptized. A worshiper named Simeon was there and he intoned these words set out in the Book of Common Prayer known to Anglicans everywhere. Lord, now let us, thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to enlighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people. It was Job's vision that this son would come to do grand things and to be the glory of his people. Job named his son Simeon. That son, Simeon, came to possess an amazing majesty of character. 
Sim Daniel, truth be told, grew up in humble circumstances, but poverty was no match for his dreams. He once told me, walking on the Bay Road towards Fortlands in Bastia, that he would read anything, everything, and then he would imagine that Nevis could become those places of which he read. He regaled me with tales of walking from Jessops to Bansgut, and instead of the coconut trees, he would see the House of Commons on the Thames River in London. This afternoon, history is being made in this little island of Nevis because we are here witnessing the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of a government-owned primary school in Charlestown. Slavery was abolished in 1833 and between 1833 and now the children of Charlestown have never had the opportunity to attend a government-owned primary school. And so, 150 years after the abolition of slavery, we are witnessing the groundbreaking ceremony of an institution that we hope will carry on the work that the Methodists, the Anglicans, the Roman Catholics, and the Presbyterians have been doing over the years. We hope that the people of Nevis, particularly the people of Charlestown, will recognize that freedom is an ongoing process. We have been freed from slavery in 1833, and today we are witnessing the beginning of freedom of an institution to educate our children. We cannot stop at any point in time and say we have achieved all that we want to achieve. And I will always say that no people or no country can afford to compromise its freedom. Sim Daniel was a complex man. He was known to assign persons to compartments of business, professional, or personal relationships, and few were they who could straddle all of these areas of his life. But with all persons, this was a man who showed a gracious humility and a charming dignity. Put simply, this man touched lives. This was a man who touched and changed lives, countless lives. To identify with the fact that Mr. Daniel is the type of person who does call you and, and present you with something and ask you to run with it. In my youthful days, as a senior customs officer with four bags on my shoulder, I can recall being called to Mr. Daniel's office. I won't tell you what year because you'll begin to calculate. <laughs> and I was in my uniform, with my FLX on my shoulder, feeling very important. But when I heard Mr. Daniel wanted to see me, I was like, what have I done? In my back of my mind, I knew I didn't do anything, but yet, being called to the premier of the country, you know, you get a little nervous, so I got up to his office and he offered me a seat. And then he said to me, Mrs. Waters, I want you to go to the treasury and run the treasury. I want you to be the treasurer of the Navy side government. Do you think you can handle it? And I was shaking all over, but I tried to hold it in. And I said to him, well, sir, all I can say to you is, I will try. And he said, okay, thank you. And that was the beginning of an extensive, intricate, difficult, 
session of my being a serious server. And let me tell you, it was the greatest challenge of my life. And I prayed morning, noon, and night. Because when I got to the treasury, there was no money in the treasury. <laughs> and there were checks that were returned. We used to call them bonds checks. And I said to myself, I have never written a bonds check in my life. And I am not going to sit in this chair and write a bonds check. And as Mr. Archibald mentioned, I am a thrifty division <laughs> and I'm proud of it. Because of that, I was able to run the treasury so that we could pay Miami Day and the likes of Miami Day. And I want to publicly say thanks to Mr. Daniel for affording me that privileged opportunity. And today, I think because of that particular experience and the way I was able to handle my situation with a supportive family, cooperative, my visions, and my trust in God, Today I can stand here with an award of envy. Daniel was so fiercely proud to be a new vision. He understood and loved everything good about this land. The history, the humor, the food, the language, especially the simple expressions of slang. A good example, take it easy, Mr. Swanston. <laughs> he loved the dominoes, the beach, the fishing boats, goat farming, kite flying, the big drum, the masquerade, Christmas sports, the friendliness of the Nivision people, this St. Thomas's church on a hill. He loved Nevis cricket. He loved the majesterial views from Mankate Gut where Job had his farm. He loved it all. I won a game for Nevis. That we, we were down to one ball, one wicket, one run. And you remember, I scored that run and was lifted off the pack and sink it. I do remember. You dropped <laughs> my memory. But it says that Premier Daniel actually went to meet him and congratulate him on his spectacular performance. Tell us about that meeting. Premier Daniel, he loves cricket. In his own quiet way, he loves cricket. And I suppose that he, he may not be one of the greatest Nivision Nevis, cricketers, but he liked cricket, like most Nivision. Uh, and at that time, everybody in Nevis loved cricket. And we had a team which all of us were proud of, and we always looked out to see and to hear what they are doing. Sim Daniel was not quick to give expansive expression to his thoughts. But when he did, his ideas were clear, straightforward, and born of an absolute conviction. They say people are drawn naturally to good leaders. It was the Honorable Ivor Algonon Stevens of revered memory, who at an NRP convention at Pinnies set out four reasons why Sim was a good leader. Sim, he said, cared for people. He was a man of compassion. In fact, it was a renowned business icon, Teddy Slack, of eternal memory, who in a conversation with Mr. Daniel on the Charleston Pier, exclaimed these memorable words. Well, hey, Daniel, you really got a soft heart. You want to help everybody. And in his unique, laconic style, Mr. Daniel's response was, what else I could do, sir? <laughs> I have found, secondly, that Sim Daniel had the capacity for an immovable focus. Sim Daniel, such a public person, actually tried to avoid public notice and had little interest in pomp and circumstance. I was Stevens' third point was that Daniel had an awesome strength of spirit which gave him the confidence to confront history. And finally, I've explained, Sim had a genuine sharpness of mind. In fact, it was the inimitable Irvin Brantley 
a great friend who never failed to move Mr. Daniel to laughter, who made the claim that Sim Daniel was so sharp, he had the greatest capacity for anyone he knew to give the impression not to know things he well understood. Some say that was his loyally skill. Make no mistake, Daniel loved the law. He was known as an expert in convincing. It is arguable that few attorneys on the island arranged the volume of transfers that Mr. Daniel did. You know, families tell their children of the midwife who handled their birth. In Nevis, families introduce their children to Sim Daniel as a lawyer who put them on a plot of land. But let the record show also that Daniel throughout the Eastern Caribbean was considered by the legal fraternity one of the finest probate attorneys we have known. In the year 1984, when he piloted the financial services legislation, he reported to the Nevis Island Assembly that 75% of the legal transactions on the island derived from real estate law. He admitted that he was pleased at the prospect that lawyers would be able now to practice in a wider array of disciplines. But above all else, Sim Daniel loved constitutional law and is widely and properly regarded as a prime framer and architect of the 1983 Constitution of St. Kitts and Nevis. I would sing them out for three major provisions in that Constitution that I believe that he would have contributed to in a, in a big way. And that is the 113. I believe that uh, that was you know, his own uh, imagination, creativity, and so on. I believe also the Nevis Island uh, administration would have been something that he would have had, uh, uh, articulated and advocated. And the third one, I believe, would have been the roaring and sharing. He was always concerned about uh, those matters, uh, such was his patriotism and love for the island of Nevis. And I, so I, I believe that he could be considered as an architect of our, of our constitution, and um, he could be one of the persons uh, who would have contributed to the uh, our new status in terms of independence. I believe in the history of the, the contemporary history of Saint Kitts written. Sim Daniel will be there uh, on the on the pages of those history. It has made an indelible mark. Some weeks ago, Dr. Daniel came to North America for medical attention and we spoke. He reminded me that Nevis lost its government in 1881 and that after 102 years, the 1983 Constitution provided Nevis with its own island administration, its own island assembly, and in section 113 is enshrined the right to independence on its own. But he cautioned me. He said, you must not miss the other big point. The big point of which he was proud was that from that constitution, Nevis obtained its own consolidated fund and its own treasury to manage that fund. This is a constitution that was designed to be a beginning, a constitution that was supposed to be reviewed after three years. Whatever we think of it, it is a constitution that gives some sound to the Nivision voice. It is a constitution that plants a seed for Nivisions to water. After 29 years, it remains the supreme law of our land. It says something about the framers of the document. It says something about the flexibility of the provisions of the Constitution. Daniel entered politics with one objective, to stand up for the interests of an independent Nevis. Co-founder of the NRP from 72 to 89, he was the chairman of the local council. 
From 75 to 83, he was a member of the Federal House of Assembly and was a Federal Minister of Government from 80 to 89. From 83 to 92, he served as Premier of Nevis and member of the Island Assembly. It is, Sim, it is Sim Daniel who has the distinction of being the only politician in the history of Nevis to represent every single constituency on the island. 75 to 80, he represented St. George's and St. James. In 83, he was elected to St. Thomas's. In 84, he was federal rep for St. Thomas and St. James. In 87, he moved to St. John's as the island representative. And in 89, he was a representative for St. John's and St. Paul's. No other politician in the history of St. Kitts and Nevis, perhaps the Caribbean, has contested and won elections in every single constituency. The records show, and the elders testify, that from Butler's to Bath, from Newcastle to New River, in every village, on some street, in some alley, on some hill, in some valley, new visions throughout this land were embracing and voting for this one man, Daniel. But if we say that Daniel was a leader, and we do, and he was, then we must remember that a general is a general because they are soldiers. In 1983, with the coming of independence, Nevis now had its own legislature. The Nevis Island Assembly returning government to Nevis for the first time since 1882. So there are some people who have the view that Dr. Daniel wanted to devote all his attention to Nevis. Tell us about the early days of his administration, how he set it up and how he went about reforming Nevis and setting the foundation for the modern day Nevis. Well, it was not an easy task because he had to be set up around the civil service because they are the ones that were in the administration. Right? Except for like the permanent secretaries who the constitution makes provision can be appointed. Right? And the wish of the minister. Um, but then the, the civil service in itself did not have that level of exposure because the highest office for any civil servant in this country was just an executive officer. They have never um, being appointed uh, up to the level of management, managing position, but at the same time, they were doing managerial work. Mm -hmm. They were doing the same work as heads of department, only to say that their final decision comes from St. Kitts, or whatever it is. But as soon as you, they feel that that person or persons, right, um, needs to be in, in elevated, that person had to be trans um, transferred to St. Kitts. The sinking of the Christina was a clear indication of that. Mm -hmm. We lost a lot of civil servants because of that. We lost a lot of people because there were a number of things which were, which could have been done in Nevis and were not done in Nevis. Nevisians had to go to St. Kitts to do these things. No sooner and we became independent, Mr. Daniel was given the Ministry of Nevis Affairs for the first time a division holder that ministry. And from there on in, he was able to get certain people around him to chart the course of developing a Nevis, which will eventually see an administration returning to Nevis, but not with people who have no experience or no idea. Health had his own administrator, agriculture had its own ad ad administrator, um, Communications had its own administrator. Finance has its own administrator. All these had their various administrators. And all of them were working within the framework of the Nevis, of the 
Ministry of Navy Affairs mm -hmm. under, under, under Dr. Daniel. And then um, Mr. Perry, who was then at Social Security, was selected by us as a grouping to be the best person to be the permanent secretary for the, in the Ministry of Navy Affairs. And so Mr. Perry was taken out of Social Security and brought into the administration right, as, the minister, as the permanent secretary. When you think of the, the, the men who were around him, I mean, there were men with men at the level of experience of running an administration, the government, or whatever it is, but they were coming as businessmen. I mean, you look at me, I started my little business in 1963. What is that, 2012? I'm still there, after Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Right? So these men, these people had tremendous business experience of knowing what growth is all about. Right? Sometimes in very hard economic times. And uh, had to make it do. And the, therefore the, the, the burden, the workload on Mr. Daniel was, was made lighter. It is right that we take, if even but a moment, to remember to remember those who walked the same darkness, who tilled the same soil, who woke at morning with the same desire. We remember the most honorable Ivor Algernon Stevens with reverence. We hold high the hands of our brother, Arthur Evelyn. We ask history to include the name of Ewell Swanster. We remember our ladies, Cabell Jeffers, Georgette Seabrooks, our most worthy sister, the Honorable Berlin Clark of constant memory. We register the presence of Rowan Liburd and Gilbert Phillip. We whisper with a prayer of thanksgiving the names of those pioneers who prepared and planted the ground for us and who since have entered the gates of Jericho before us. Eustace Tessie Nisbet. Ralph Harris. Horace Liburd. Sonny Paris and our brother Levi Morton. And in our most recent dispensations, the current leader of our country, the Honorable Joseph Parry, <laughs> Mr. Phineas Griffin, our brother Mr. Herman Liburd, and Mr. Julian Nisbet. Above all else, Daniel was determined that the government should help the Nivision people feel good about themselves and about their land. And so he set out in a hurry to shape a Nivision economy and society. Sim Daniel, who had introduced the financial services regime to Nevis in 1984, in order to complement these services, thought he would bring an investment group together for the Bank of Nevis. In 1985, the bank was formed with a capitalization of $250,000. Today, the Bank of Nevis employs 60 persons, has a capitalization of $54 million, controlling 50% of the market size. The Bank of Nevis, from 1985 to 2010, dispersed loans totaling $300 million and has assets of $4 hundred million dollars. This contribution stands as yet another example of the vision of this man, Daniel. It was out of the blue. I didn't expect it. At the time I was living in St. Kitts, I was at the time employed at TDC as chief accountant at TDC. And I heard all the talk about a bank being formed in Nevis and 
directors being put together and capital being raised. But I was not, at that time, involved in that process in any meaningful way. So it was a surprise to me when I got that call on a Sunday afternoon asking me whether I would consider taking on the role as chairman. I can only surmise as to the reason why he called. I think he knew I was a division. I had recently qualified as an accountant, and I think generally the feeling was that as, a, as an accountant, you would know something about business. And I believe that was why the call came to me. I would say now, after 20, 30 years, that I didn't know very much about banking. But I accepted the call, and I, I, I sometimes like to joke about that because at the time, and it was away in Jamaica at the university. And the call came on a Sunday afternoon and I, I didn't consult her. I didn't consult her, I simply thought it over quickly and I said, yes, I'll give it a shot. And I'll be honest in saying that several times after, I sometimes thought I had made an error by accepting without consulting. Because there were times when the bank had difficulties. And I said to myself, boy, what trouble did I get myself in? But at the end of it all, I am glad that I answered the call and I participated in something that for Nivisions has become something significant and big. So I thank him for calling me. At that time, as far as I know, a lot of the groundwork had been done in terms of raising capital, in terms of getting directors together. And I think he was simply looking for somebody to fill the role of, of chairman. I think other people had been asked and maybe had said no. And so he was on the hunt for somebody to be the chairman. And I said yes. His time and service to his people, I must say, are unparalleled. His contribution that has, he has made, he has touched the lives of every man, woman and child in Nevis and not only for now but also for generations to come. The institutions that he has created, the Bank of Nevis, Delta Petroleum and others are living testimony of the enormity of the contribution that he has made to the island of Nevis and to the country and all its peoples. His qualities were very unique and we are hoping that God would send us another Simeon Daniel. Although we were blood relatives, I never attempt to use that to have access to him. But I know that he has helped everyone, including myself, because upon transforming Nevis, he was instrumental in my coming back to this island. And I hope many Nevisians would see the major contribution that he has made and hence give them the impetus to return to Nevis. That is the catalyst which he has created. His presence, his state of mind, all the institutions that he has created have in fact impacted on all of us and that should be the catalyst to bring quite a number of Nevisians back to our beloved Nevis. God bless his soul and I hope he rests in eternal peace. We conclude by saying that the work of Daniel shows lessons in foresight, in courage, in patriotism, in gracious dignity. Today, the future of Nevis has a potential more dynamic than imagined a generation ago. Today, the memory remains. But it is a memory that ought to endure. For surely, my friends, we bring honor to ourselves and to our own land when we celebrate the memory of our noblest sons and daughters. There lingers a simple and undoubting conviction that such a noble son was Dr. Daniel, and that this majesty of character, this selfless devotion to the homeland, this life of public service, should well commend this great man for posthumous consideration as the next national hero of St. Kitts and Nevis. <laughs> Today we say that a Daniel, a good man, came from Barnsgut. A Daniel, a good man, did rise to change the trajectory of life 
for all our people, even those yet unborn. This Daniel, this good man, has heard the trumpet's call and is now on a journey across the river Jordan. He is chaperoned, we believe, by a cloud of angels. We usher him into St. Peter's Court and we call him to the bar of higher service with our prayers, our thanks, and our commendations.
Party!